You know what we're doing right now? Celebrating the Holy Eucharist was illegal in the Roman Empire up until the time of the Emperor Constantine from the year 312. And so, the early Christians, it took three years to become a Christian before you were baptized. Three years! And then, you could be arrested, you could be executed, uh, and, and thousands of them. But they would gather for the Eucharist in, in people's homes, usually in the evening, in hiding. And uh, in those early years, there was a teenager named Carpathius. And Carpathius is about 16 years old. And what he did was take the Holy Eucharist into the Roman jails and prisons to give the Holy Eucharist to the imprisoned Christians. And he did this uh, for quite a long time. Being so young, uh, no one suspected him of doing anything like that. But eventually, he was caught, and he became a martyr. He is now Saint Carpathius. And I propose to you, he should be the patron saint of Eucharistic ministry. Huh? Those who give communion here at church, those who give communion to the sick, in hospitals, in homes, in nursing homes, saints. But think about it. From the very beginning, the early Christians knew that the Eucharist wasn't just bread and wine. That in fact, it was the living, risen Christ, the living bread, come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread, St. John says, will live forever. And so Carpathius took his life, he gave his life to bring the Eucharist to his brother Christian. I mean, absolutely beautiful. But notice the early faith that this was not just a piece of bread. This something was from the living, risen Christ, the bread of life. Now, we're Western people. I mean, it's just the fact our language, it affects the way we think. Uh, it, it helps to bring on the scientific revolution. We think this question, and uh, we try to understand. We divide, we dissect, uh, we truly uh, want to comprehend. Faith is teaching understanding, and in the Western moment, for example, Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas will take the philosopher Aristotle and use his philosophy to try to make an attempt to explain the Eucharist. And Thomas will, will, will say, well, um, all of us are human beings, so our essence is the same. Whether we're a man or a woman, a child, whatever our age, we're all human. That's our essence. But there are accidental. You can be a red man, you can be a white woman, you can be yellow, you can be black. So the color of our skin is an accident, Thomas says. The essence is the same. We're all human, the accidents are different. But I'll say with the Eucharist, the bread and the wine, the essence changes. It becomes Christ. It becomes the written Christ. But the accident, how it appears, stays the same. It still looks like bread, it still looks like wine, but in fact, it is now quick. The essence has changed. Or it will come, with our Western learning, to go back to the language that Jesus spoke, Aramaic. And to the Hebrew mind, when he said, blood, it didn't mean, perhaps we immediately think of, well, what kind of blood? O, A positive. We, we, we think when we mention blood, we're thinking of what runs through the body. 
To the Hebrews, blood meant life. Life. And that's why Moses was sprinkled the blood of animals on the people of that life. And body. Body to the Hebrew meant the entire person. Hope. So when Jesus says, this is my body given to you, it's like saying, this is me, this is I'm given to you. Holy. This is my blood. This is my life being poured out to you. See? We try to understand, but you bow before the mystery. You're dealing with God. But we try to understand. And I'm all for I'm all for but I'm also a direction. And when I was in Canada, uh, in the seminary, we went to Tumbermere, Ontario, uh, a Russian Valley. She was a Russian Catholic. There are 22 different Eastern rites in our city. We're the Latin rite, the biggest. But there's the Russian rite, there's the Coptic rite in Egypt. Bishop Lavashi's mother is a Rutinian Catholic. And they celebrate the liturgy, these other rites, in the Eastern Sun. In the Eastern Sun. Uh, which is a different kind of worship, but also it's a different kind of thinking. Jesus thought as an Eastern. It's a different kind of thinking. So we want to come to Mel Ontario, uh, Catherine the Hawk, Gold. A Russian gentleman who, as a young girl, fled Russia during the Bolshevik Revolution with Lenin, and eventually ended up in Canada. And we always said that even though she was a Russian baroness, Catherine the Hunt, she had enough sense to marry an Irishman. Eddie Doherty, and I met both of them, and, and they were all there at the time Eddie Doherty and Catherine the Hunt Doherty. But we went into their chapel, a Russian Catholic chapel, seminarian room, thinking of Boston. And in the chapel, they had an icon on the altar. These are painted, and the, the painters fast and praise as they paint the icon. So see these with all the Orthodox churches, all of these Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, all the Eastern Catholic churches, they have icons. And it's like a window into God. The window into God. So on the altar there was an icon here, the tabernacle, and then the Bible, the sacred scripture here. It's like that. We came into the chapel, but Baroness Catherine, and one of us said to her, she said, Christ is Christ, Christ is Christ, when he came to me. One of us said to her, how is Christ living in the Irish And how is he present in the Eucharist? And how is he present in the church? And she said, oh, we don't have the question. So that's his question, Jesus. That's his question, wow. Now, can you see the difference? It's an Eastern mentality. He's present in the icon, he's present in the Eucharist, he's present in the Scripture. We don't have the time, he said. What I want to tell you is when we're studying, when we're discussing, use the Western mind. Go ahead. Use philosophy and theology all we can and try to understand. When we're worshiping like we are right now, use the Eastern mind. Use the Eastern mind as the present. When I hear to dissect him or, or to turn this into a mystery to be solved, he's here and we're receiving him. I want to go back to the uh, the fourth century, the year of 350. And 
Constantine is now the emperor. We're allowed to worship freely. In fact, Christianity becomes the religion of the empire. But this is from the fifth sermon of the Bishop of Jerusalem, Syria. This sermon he gave to the newly baptized at Easter. They were receiving the Eucharist for the very first time. And here's what Cyril says in the year 350. When you come up to receive, make your left hand a throne for your right hand. See? You make a throne. The left hand becomes a throne for the right hand. You make a cross with your hand, so will say. Cut the palm and so receive the body of Christ and then answer, Amen. Do you think this is bad in the folks? This is the year 350. Carefully hollow your eyes by the touch of the sacred body and then partake, taking care not to lose no part of it. While yet you are given bold up, would you not take the utmost care to hold it fast? Not letting it hang close through your fingers, lest you so much be the poorer? How much more carefully then would you guard against losing so much of the crown of that which is more precious than gold or precious stone? Then he says, after partaking of the bound folk, Approach also the chalice of his body, bowing low in a posture of worship and reverence as you say, Amen. There is the tradition. That's the tradition. Going back to the fourth century. When we free, we were freely allowed to worship publicly. So, if we can, Think as a Westerner and pray as an Easterner. We're going to have the best to both of them. As Pope John Paul II used to say to the Orthodox, Christianity is breathing with one lung. The Epsilon of the East and the West are breathing together. We want to know that. We're going to know that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen because Christ, to him, I believe, Thank you.